Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today's video is gonna be a little out of the ordinary. Instead of focusing on a specific function of Logic Pro 10, I wanna show you a third-party solution for cleaning up your audio, and that's Isotopes RX8. RX is an application and a suite of plugins for the purpose of restoration or cleaning up audio. If you've ever found yourself in a situation where you've recorded in unideal conditions, where there's noise in the background from traffic or an air conditioner, or there's clicks and pops all over the audio, or maybe the audio got clipped because the preamp gain on the audio interface, you know, was a little too loud. And while I truly believe Logic Pro 10 has everything you need to compose, to record, to mix, to master, the restoration toolkit is not really quite there in Logic, at least at this moment in time. So for the purposes of denoising or declicking or declipping, we have to look to a third-party option. And RX has become indispensable to me. I mean, I rely on it to clean up my voiceovers for my videos, to clean up tracks that I receive from clients that maybe were clipped or, you know, anything else. So I have a couple of pieces of audio that I want to show you how RX can maybe help you if you're looking for this sort of functionality and you don't have it at this moment in time. I do want to point out that I take product recommendations very seriously, and that's why in the last three years of the website and channel, I've only ever recommended like four times. I have absolutely no intent of why Logic Pro Rules turning into a channel that focuses on anything but Logic Pro 10. This is just to help you fill in the gaps where Logic Pro 10 doesn't have those facilities or functions quite yet. Cool, so I have RX8 Advanced. It's the fully loaded version of RX. And if we take a look at Safari here, there are three options to choose from. There's Elements, which is probably gonna be the best value for most people because it covers the basics, the things that you're most often going to need in terms of repair and restoration. That's like removing hum, removing clicks or clipping, denoising vocals, and even the repair assistant to help guide you through the process of restoration if you feel like you're not quite sure how to approach cleaning up your tracks. Standard is the next step up, and you know it's quite a leap because you get many, many more plugins to work with. Standard was great for me for things like mouth declick for my videos, spectral denoise, deplosive, the music rebalance is pretty cool. And then advanced is, you know, fully loaded. So for those of us who are working day in and day out in like post-production or film where you need a robust toolkit for very specific scenarios and situations that nothing else can take care of, advanced is gonna be for you. Now over in RX-8, we have a view of a bass guitar but this looks nothing like anything we've seen in Logic or anywhere else. Well, this colorful display represents, you know, energy at different frequencies. And, you know, we have time going left to right. We have frequencies going from top to bottom. So we have, you know, 10 Hertz up to 20 K. And this represents like the fundamental of the bass harmonics from the distortion and the amp emulation that I used. But if we go down here to the slider, we can switch this back to a waveform view, which is much more what we're used to when it comes to audio. I recommend that when you're looking at the spectrogram view of the standalone application, you know, just think to yourself, what's the problem that I'm looking to correct? And then you can go looking for that in the colorful display. In this case, I have a bass guitar that has that classic amp noise. Pretty sure that we're all used to. And we just take a quick listen, check it out. Cool, you know, that classic amp noise. Now I'm gonna, Zoom in right about here. And the goal is, is to remove the noise, the ambient noise of the amp. First thing we need to do is identify some noise where there's no performance. And this is crucial for the process of denoising. We need a noise profile for these plugins to learn from to know how to reduce the noise across our track. And what's cool about RX-8 is there's actually a brand new plugin called Guitar Denoise, and it offers three different options for removing amp noise or squeaks or pick noise from your guitars or basses. In this case, I'm only looking at the amp noise function. And all we need to do is make a selection of that noise. So I've selected my noise at the beginning of this performance and hit learn. And now the plugin has learned the noise and can apply it across the performance. So if we remove the selection and hit preview on the plugin, check it out. So much better as opposed to if we just hit play, massive difference. Now you would adjust the sensitivity and the resolution to try to get the best sounding result without causing artifacts to the bass guitar. And then at that point you would hit render. Now the good thing is, is I've gone ahead and rendered this. 
So we can poke through the history, like an undo history and logic of the different things that we've tried out. I'm going to select guitar denoise. And you can see that the noise has been removed subtly from the background here. If you switch between the two, you can see it reintroduced and removed. And at this point, we could export this track out of RX and then import it into Logic and away we go. And you can also use many of these plugins in Logic as well. We're just going to focus on the standalone application. Next up, I want to take a look at this kick track that I have here. Switch it back to the waveform view and we can see that something is not right with this kick track. It's completely squared off, which is a very odd look. And if we zoom in here, if I just make a selection, and we're going to zoom in, we can see that this audio has been clipped. When this client recorded this kick drum track, the preamp gain was a little too loud and logic in the converter on the audio interface just chopped off everything above zero dB, which leaves us with a kick drum that sounds clipped. If we take a listen. You can also hear some gating in the audio as well. So how do we fix this? Well, we can use something like the D-clip module. And right here, if we make a selection, let's just select these kick hits and then hit the suggest button. And RX's D-clip is going to say, okay, cool. At negative 0.5, that's where the clipping is occurring. So let's reconstruct the audio or resynthesize the audio to reintroduce dynamic range and fidelity and remove this clipping. Now I have the quality set to high. And I'm going to bring down the makeup gain by a healthy amount because when you go through this process of de-clipping, you can end up with audio that's louder than where you started because it's remanufacturing the audio, what it might look like if it hadn't been clipped. Now, I've gone ahead and already gone through this process. So if we click right here, ah, way better. So let's hear before and after. And before. The declipping has caused the kick track to be quieter, but now it sounds way better and doesn't sound distorted as a result. And then you can further refine with things like declick. Now let's take a listen to another WAV file of me whistling in my apartment using voice memos on my iPhone. And there's quite a bit going on. Let's go back to the initial state and let's hear this. With the window AC running, it's gonna be loud. Check it out. That's very loud. And for maybe a voice memo, it doesn't really matter. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna clean this up a little bit to help it be better represented. We can also see that the top here it's just black. It's like the audio just stops at about like 16K. And I found when I record with my iPhone for some videos where I'm on screen, it tends to do this. It just chops off everything at the very high end. So in this case, we're going to use something like spectral recovery, which can remanufacture that high end that was chopped off. All we have to do is hit this learn button. Now we've learned where that high end is missing. And you can also adjust the amount or the percentage and the cutoff. So it's 16,000 Hertz and then hit render and apply this to the audio. So if we go down here and now we've introduced some new high end, I don't know why it doesn't occur down here, but that's fine by me for now. Cool. Next up, we're going to use spectral denoise to remove a lot of this ambient AC noise. So we're going to make a selection right here where that noise exists. We're gonna learn again, cool. And then we can apply or render this to everything. Cool. And now let's hear it with these changes. Now we've removed a ton of this noise, but we also could be introducing artifacts because of the denoising being a little too high. So if we back out of this, we go back here, we can listen to the output noise only and adjust. Cool, let's preview again. Cool, we're just going quickly through this but you can make these sort of adjustments, fine tune. So you maybe are not necessarily removing all of the noise, just most of the noise that's distracting and creating a more even, less obtrusive sort of sound in your audio. 
And then from there we can de-plosive because there are some plosive sort of activity going on here. Cool, so let's set this to maybe 150 hertz and we'll keep the strength and sensitivity the same. You can look right down here, 10 hertz, 20 hertz, 50, 100. And it goes pretty high up. I mean, if we make this selection here and then zoom in, you can see it's almost at like 200 hertz at times. And these highlighted sections down at the way bottom are those plosives. So if we select everything, hit render. Now we remove the plosives from the audio. And go back to the original state. And after. I mean, a dramatic improvement if you're trying to increase intelligibility in some trying situations. Now, for my purposes, most often, of course, is the voiceovers for the videos. So I need to clean this up. And if you see the spectrogram here, it looks a little weird. Take a listen, and then I'll tell you what's going on here. The situation that I have is, is that I have an AC in my studio and it's rather loud. It actually has a very specific frequency you know, right below 300 Hertz here. We zoom in. It has this resonance that just goes on and on and on. And during the summer, I need the AC and, you know, I'm not really going to do much about it now. So I use spectral denoise to clean up or at least reduce the sound of the AC in the background. So we take a snapshot of this AC noise, let the microphone pick up that ambient AC noise. And then I can use spectral denoise here to learn the sound of this AC. And you can see here, there's that resonance. And then if we go to my voiceover here, my audio, I can apply this across the entire thing. I've gone ahead and done that. So let's go back to the original state of some of my spoken word here. And actually we'll hone in right about here. So we can hear that AC noise. You can see it right there and right down here. Loops, drag this right in. And let's open the notation and boom, loops. Cool, so let's introduce that spectral denoise. What a massive difference. Let's hear that now. So let me just make this selection, drag this right in and let's open the notation and boom. Drag. So spectral denoise can help make it more manageable for me for my videos. Additionally, there is a mouth declick function, which is very helpful because when you first start making videos, you don't really think about things like clicking of your mouth. And then many a commenter will let you know that that clicking of your mouth is kind of distracting and gross. So you gotta learn how to deal with it. I found that a lot of de-clicking plugins aren't very helpful in this territory. And that's why when Isotope released mouth de-click, this was like a game changer for my videos. And so we can set the frequency skew if it's more of a low frequency type of click or a high frequency, you can adjust for that. You can adjust the sensitivity and click widening is you know, if you got clicks that are, I guess, more erratic and wider in scope in terms of time, you can adjust this. But I always leave this at zero milliseconds. And then we can preview this. If we open the Apple Loops, drag this right in, and let's open the notation, and boom, we have it right there. And you can, if we open, and we can output the clicks only as well, so we can hear how gross that sounds. Now I've gone ahead and done this. Mouth D-click. And I've also introduced a second round of mouth declick, more focused on the high-end energy. So if we go maybe right down here, have it right there. And you can add labels and your instruments and all that. But between these 10 or 12 different features versus, go back here, we have it right there. And you can add labels and your instruments and all that, but massive difference. And then lastly, deplosive yet again. My plosives tend to go up to 110, 120 hertz. So we can use deplosive right here. Set the sensitivity, the strength to reduce those plosive sort of sounds. But between these 10 or 12 different features, you can hear it right there. So if we introduce that, it's just completely removed from the audio. And then I can export this and it's at a way better spot than where it started. Lastly, with a recent update of RX8, you can actually use music rebalance right within Logic. And it's an ARA plugin. If we go into the plugin section here, go down to Isotope. We have music rebalance, but if we select in the first slot, 
can go to audio units, isotope, we now have music rebalance ARA, where this plugin will analyze the audio and then provide us with four different stems that we can adjust for our track. So if you are mastering a track, this could be very helpful. Or you can adjust the level of the vocals or the bass or the percussion or other instruments in the track after the fact. It's pretty awesome. So let's hear this track and I'll play around with some of these sliders. Freeze frame on your own still. Let's check out the percussion as well. Freeze frame on your own still. Chasing the wilderness, can we record it? Your strokes are equal. Picture and that is a perfect portrait. First sight to curve. Now, obviously, depending on the complexity of the mix and how hard you're pushing these sliders in different directions, you know, sometimes you can get that artifacty sound, but just in subtle amounts, this sounds so good. So the point of all this is, is just that sometimes we have situations where we don't have an easy solution for noise, clipping, clicks, rebalancing a stereo wave file. And that's where RX-8 can come into the picture and be of tremendous value. And I use it just about every single day. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, for subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much for watching this video.